there's nothing quite like the sound of a supercharged V8, a 405 kilowatt supercharged V8. The Jaguar F-Pace SVR is one of the last of its kind for this style of real muscle V8 SUV. It is quite expensive though at around $160,000 but that's expensive to probably you and I but to the people that are buying these types of cars it's not really expensive. But to put my journalist cap on you can get some pretty tantalizing machinery for the same sort of money. Here's a list of other vehicles you could consider if you're about to sign for one of these. You've probably seen in the news that Jaguar will soon be transitioning to a fully electric lineup. That means this is probably one of the last V8s that Jaguar is going to offer. How sad is that? For such a storied manufacturer, you know, known for its screaming inline sixes, legendary V12s, and then supercharged V8s in more modern times. It's going to be a sad day when this finally is put to rest. It is a pretty old vehicle now though, and it used to compete with the premium mid-size SUV class with the likes of the BMW X3, Audi Q5, and the Mercedes GLC. But in recent times, it has been bumped up to the large SUV class. So that means it's going up against the Audi Q7 and X5 and so on. It still looks absolutely gorgeous, particularly in this color scheme with the black highlights around the windows and skirting and the dark gray color. It really does stand out with muscular bonnet vents and quad outlet exhausts hinting at its powerful underpinnings. The interior is just the same, it's really nice in here. The only thing is, it is a very sporty SUV, so the, the roof is quite low, the windows aren't very tall compared with some rivals. It just means you feel like you're driving a sports car more, or at least a sports sedan, more than a big upright SUV. The material and trim is all very nicely presented. It looks stunning in here. There's a good mixture of different colors and tones as well. And these sports seats in the front really hug you in. Rear seat space is okay, but it really depends on what you're comparing it to. So if you stack it up against an Audi Q5, then it's actually not that spacious. But if you bump it back to the midsize class, then yeah, it's about average compared with a Q5 and X3 and so on. You've got climate vents and kind of semi-detached outer seats with sporty bolsters on the sides. Headroom is okay, but yeah, the roof does swoop down a bit eventually because of that sporty profile. I really like this touchscreen. It's not over the top. It doesn't completely take over the view out the front. It's curved, so it's still very modern. The graphics are beautiful, and there is still a climate control panel down below, which is great, so you don't have to dive into that screen. The instrument cluster is fully digital, but it's arranged to look like previous Jaguar models that had twin gauges, so mechanical gauges. There's always been a, uh, a little display in the middle for the trip information. There's a few different display modes you can choose from as well. You can blend the two dials into one and have some information on the outsides and put a map in the middle and so on. And then in the back, you've got a huge boot. So this competes well against midsize SUVs and even large SUVs actually. The on paper figure of over 700 litres is very impressive. Out on the road though, this is a beast of a vehicle to drive. You've got a few different drive modes from this little pop-up switch. You've got eco and a dynamic mode and as well as some off-road modes. I'll put it into dynamic mode. And you've also got an S mode for the transmission. So you just knock it back into S and it will be a bit more aggressive. Like look at that, just blip the throttle on the downshift. I didn't actually provoke the downshift either. So it's just a bit more aggressive with the shift pattern. And of course, you've also got paddle shifters as well. The engine is pretty old. It's based on the old AJ series, which was manufactured within Ford's production facilities. So this was back when Ford owned Jaguar. It had a little section within its production facilities to accommodate and build Jaguar parts. And that's where the AJ series sort of began. 
As far as I know, production of this engine has completely finished now, and in fact, most Jaguar Land Rover products, or more the Land Rover products, like big Range Rovers and so on, they've switched to a BMW sourced 4.4 litre twin turbo V8. This offers a different character though. Sorry about that sun. It's a really snarling, growling V8. I'll just under the window for you. It's so loud. It's probably one of the loudest SUVs currently on sale. comfort yeah this is a high performance you know svr model so it is pretty firm but it also uncovers some of the creaks and rattles in the interior because it is so firm i'm not sure if it's the build quality that's the fault or, or if it's just that the, the suspension is quite firm i wouldn't say it's uncomfortable it's not bone jarring it's just you can feel the little bumps and the little details in the road but that's exactly what you want for a high performance suv because it means when it comes to corners, you've got that body stability. It won't, there's no body roll at all, basically. It behaves much like a sports car. You do, you are aware that you've got a high center of gravity, but yeah, it's got that agile feeling, very direct steering, it's precise, it's engaging. Yeah, you just want to take this for a big drive along a nice winding road. In terms of fuel economy, I'm averaging 14.3 litres per 100 kilometres at the moment. That's over a distance of about 1,000 kilometres. It produces 405 kilowatts, so you can't really expect absolute economy. There's no hybrid assistance here either. It's just old school, raw, supercharged V8. The transmission is very nice when you're using the paddle shifters. It blips the throttle, and it's very quick. It changes gear exactly when you pull the paddle. Even if you just leave it in D, but I am in dynamic mode to show you the kick down performance. Slow down a bit, floor it. Awesome sound, you can't get enough of that sound. But yeah, just then you could see that it's got so much torque that it doesn't really need to kick right down the gears. It just pulls through the longer gears. If you put it in S mode though, yeah, it's more aggressive. So I'll do the same thing, floor it. It remains at higher revs in S anyway, so it's already prepared to, to take off. I'll just let it drop right down a gear. So that's two and a half thousand RPM. Yeah, and it downshifts. You just can't get enough of that sound. It's going to be really sad when Jaguar no longer produces these. All right, let's head out now to the private road and do some performance testing.